going to introduce a few people and then we are going to get started. Um, and uh, the first thing is uh, Brenna Lauren, who is uh, our special events coordinator, works at NDCA. Our main office is in Bismarck, she's in Fargo. Uh, Ria Bito, who is our public information officer, and she is located here in Bismarck. Um, and on the phone, if the two of you would show your face for a moment, we have two members of our uh, stakeholder group, which are Zelda and Emma. And there are two of, I think, 12 from the group who are, um, who are gonna listen in on this call today. So thanks for being here, we appreciate that. Um, Anastasia, would you put your name and email into the chat for us? And we're gonna kind of go through a very quick web presentation about Arts Across the Prairie. Then we'll pull up the um, call the RFP and go through a few things in there. And then we're opening it up for questions because that is probably the most important thing that we can do for you today is respond to questions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with a little quickie webinar and we're gonna roll through it quickly because it covers the, in thanks Anastasia, uh, it covers the entire Arts Across the Prairie program. Okay. You go, Brenna, whenever you're ready. There you go. All right. So it's a placemaking program in rural North Dakota. Next. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Um, and it's the first of its kind in terms of it being a statewide public art program. There will be eight installations placed across the state. Um, and they will be in rural locations. So rural meaning no buildings, no people. Next. Um, we know a little bit about public art. I'm gonna assume that you as artists have contributed to the public art field in some way or have an interest. Next. Next. So, we have eight regions that we're building installations in. In region one, which is indicated on the map there, it's the northwest corner of North Dakota. We received an Our Town grant from uh, the National Endowment from the Arts, as well as funds from Commerce and the Andrus Charitable Trust. Uh, and an artist was selected, next. This project that was selected for region one, and you might want to just check this out. Uh, this is uh, by Thane Lund. It is a land work. Um, so it is low to the ground, but it sits high up on a plateau. Next. The next section that we're working in is the Northeast section, which is this region here where we are now. These are, um, there is an aerial view of the Dolan Esker, which is the land formation that we are uh, going to put this installation on. And the lower picture is the some members of the stakeholder group standing on top of the Dolan Esker. So another um, place where the stakeholders chose a high perspective of land. Next. We're also working in region two, and in this particular region, it looks like uh, the stakeholders are selecting land that is called a prairie pothole. They're called prairie potholes, which are, again, glacial lakes that have been left over and usually have some kind of a highway near or running through them. Next. Uh, we're also working in region three. Next. And that includes uh, several counties. And again, rural, rural, no buildings. Next. And these are the goals for Arts Across the Prairie. 
And it's just good to keep these in mind about we're working in eight regions, but we're trying to strengthen the cross county networking. We're going to promote all eight of the installations through uh, North Dakota tourism. This will heighten the visibility of North Dakota as a creative environment, uh, stimulate economic activity uh, by connecting all of the full large eight installations uh, through marketing and uh, websiting and geocaching and really connecting historic and artistic and cultural. Uh, and we're also asking every artist who is selected to help teach uh, North Dakota artists how to work in their particular form. I'll get into that a little later. Next. So the stakeholder group that's kind of behind putting out the RFP for, that you've all read, they've come from all over the counties in region four. They've committed to meeting monthly and they've been meeting for over a year. They facilitated the site selection for this installation. They'll be engaging community members and others in this process. They'll be selecting, along with other community members, the artist who will make this installation, and they're celebrating their regional cultural heritage. Next. So placemaking, we feel, is um, with a greater sense of identity and understanding. Um, next. We feel like it helps to humanize the environment, provide an intersection between past, present, and future. Next. So again, all of the stakeholders are invested in the cultural heritage that exists in their region. And NDCA has moved from being just a state grant maker to much more of a rural development partner. Next. And that's it for that. So now I'm going to have us just talk a little bit about Region 4 in particular. So uh, Okay, so um, particularly, let's see, Brenna, I think the best thing to do right now would be to bring up the RFP. And we'll talk through just what you all have seen by looking at the request for proposals and I'll go through it, but we'll go through it only very briefly again, because what I'd like to do is make sure that we respond to your questions about what this is gonna be. Okay. Um, so you can, uh, we talked about arts across the prairie, so let's go to the next down lower and keep going into page two. And here we get into region four. So northeastern North Dakota region four has four counties in it, Pembina, Walsh, Grand Forks, and Nelson. Further down in the request for proposals, we've given you links to those counties. We think it's important that you look at who lives there, how, what, what their history and geography is. So we're working through the Red River Regional Council in Grafton and the Public Arts Commission in Grand Forks to facilitate the project. And the stakeholder group, again, came together over the course of a year. And they came up with the title, Endless Sky, dynamic layers. So this will be a permanent, not temporary, large scale art installation. And we're really interested in hearing about your affection for and attention to place. Place is a very important theme in North Dakotas. We really want uh, the artist to recognize that rural communities and residents will be living with the installation for a long time. Uh, we anticipate that these will be up 50, 60, 70, longer in perpetuity. Um, and we will also want, so we will want them to feel comfortable with what's being um, built. And we will also ask for the finalists to be involved in training North Dakota artists 
in an outdoor installation process. Okay, you can scroll up a little. So you can be an individual or you can be a creative team. Either one is fine. Uh, it will not alter the budget or the fee if there is more than one person involved or if there's five people involved. We have a ceiling on our budget. So today being the app, today being the informational webinar, we're looking by Monday, March 27th for, for phase one. And that just means that you're going to submit initial information. You are not going to submit a full proposal at that time. We'll take a few weeks and we'll, of those, of the information submitted, we'll select three finalists to send us a detailed RFP, a real proposal with budget and schematic drawings and ideas, et cetera. And that'll be due Friday, May 12th. And then we'll have online interviews on Thursday, May 18th with the three finalists. And by May 25th, we'll select the final artist or artist team. Next. So in terms of what we're asking for you to send in, it follows this way. You're gonna submit a one, you're only going to submit one PDF document, a single PDF document. So there will be one page that's contact information of the lead artist or the creative team. The applicant must live in the contiguous United States. On the next page, a one page letter describing your interest in the project, uh, as well as your approach to art making. We're very interested in your statement addressing eligibility criteria, what your approach is to research, how you would engage with the stakeholders and integrating educational opportunities. Then there would be a one page bio or resume. And again, if there is more than one team member, each team member would get one page. On another page, you would give us seven work samples. You can have a list of seven work samples. And we're looking for the image, the title, the, the or the title, the year, and the medium and the dimensions. And then you would give us up to seven digital images of your recent projects. So the full PDF has to be under two, M two MBs of size, cannot be larger than that. The system crashes it out. So it doesn't, we're not that worried about the quality of the images. Hopefully it will be clear, but you're going to give us your website and we'll go explore a little bit. But you are not submitting a project proposal or design at this time. Okay, next. So we'll look at them for um, to make sure that the everything meets the basic qualifications. We'll select three finalists based on the quality of your letter in, of intent directly related to the site and why you want to be involved, the quality of your work samples, and the ability of the artist to complete the project based on your prior work experience. So then we'll look at in phase two, let's go down. Only three finalists will be involved in the final process. We'll look at the resonance with the project description. The installation is presented as a community access and is welcoming. Your mode of working and design process approach, what that is and how it includes works in the budget and your ability to communicate and engage with diverse communities, including fabrication and construction professionals. So that final uh, design concept will be due by May 12th. So we've given you an exact way of how you're gonna submit the RFP in terms of it going to arts at nd.gov and the subject line, and there is, um, no materials will be accepted after the listed time, which will be 11.59 on the 27th of March. Okay, and there, as I mentioned before, there will be an online interview process on May 18th and we'll announce on May 25th. Uh, here is the budget information. 
So there is $150,000 for this particular region. Each region of the state has a budget of $150,000. Of that, the artistic creative team is about 55,000 of the 150. And that includes the design, the technical drawings, a charrette or model, in-state transportation, lodging, per diem, and two or three out-of-state trips if you're coming from outside of North Dakota. We'll work out the dates with you. We recognize that some of you may propose uh, something that is maybe requires a little bit more engineering, maybe requires a little bit more strong foundation. If you're talking about the budget with us in your proposal and can basically say, we might need to look at the budget because I'm thinking about something that is very tall and might require a stronger foundation, it's fine to put it out there. We'll talk about it. Is there much money, more, much more money available? We'll see. We might be able to come up with it depending on what the proposal is. But it's a slow process for us. Uh, full project timeline. So we will um, use this late spring and summer to finish the planning process with design, budgeting, community involvement. We hope to break ground in late 23, late summer 23, might be fall. Uh, Construction work will be build and weather dependent. If you know anything about North Dakota, we have a lot of snow and it lasts a long time. So sometimes our window of, uh, of ground not being frozen is, is small, but we would definitely be looking at construction during spring and summer of 24 and hopefully late summer or fall of 24 for a public unveiling. So, as you follow this down, and um, you know what I'm thinking is, re, um, Brenna, would you, we can stop with that and I'm gonna let you uh, share some images of the Dalinesker and I'll talk about it while, while Brenna is showing you some images. And honestly, um, give me one second just to, Pull open. I apologize. And we're there. Okay. So you go ahead and can show some pictures and I will talk a little bit about uh, either what you're looking at or about the Dalin Esker um, and why the stakeholders chose that. So this is a, um, a county parcel map. And Brenna, do you think you can? Yes. Uh, that's the Dalinesker. But if can you go over to uh, the line? Go to your right. 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 Stop. So that is a state highway. And if we build off a state highway, can you run your arrow up and down? So up, no, up and down. Yep, okay. So this, if we're on a state highway, we actually have a partnership with Department of Transportation that allows us to help with the pull out, the parking lot uh, and some byway signage, et cetera. So, the Dalinesker is to uh, in that square, as you can see. If you, uh, Brenna, can you follow the go down and just follow the squiggly green lines? Go into that square. The squiggly green. There you go. You got it. Okay, great. Go to the next picture. So this is a, a larger aerial view of what we're looking at. And then do you want to put in some of the photos? Yep. Okay. So. Oh, this is the drone video. That's fine. So this is a drone video that we took of the Dalineskers. It's a glacial formation that is left over 
uh, from um, long ago. Uh, it stretches almost four miles. It's basically um, the esker represents the forces of nature that have impacted not only our landscape, but the lives of the people there. It ties into the human history and traits. The height and perspective of looking out over the land was an important aspect discussed by the stakeholders. This is a beautiful shot of the Eskers. Um, the location represents the endless sky and dynamic layers of the region, indigenous culture, roaming buffalo, the glacial landscape of steep hills and valleys, open prairie with endless skies and stars. The design of the public work should be a symbolic reference to the natural setting. You can show the next one. Um, to the natural setting and to the culture and economic history of the region. So stakeholders would like to see these themes represented and we encourage you to investigate. And again, we have included a lot of different um, links for you. Eskers are an in fact inverted river channels and they snake their way across the countryside. They were deposited by streams and rivers flowing on the surface of the glacier in cracks in the glacial ice or sometimes in tunnels beneath the ice. These ice age rivers and streams deposited gravel and sand in ice walled valleys just as modern stream deposits sediment in its earthen valley. When the ice banks of the Esker, eventual, Esker River eventually mess, melts away, the gravel deposits in the valley remained as ridges above the surrounding countryside. So there are thousands of Esker ridges in North Dakota, and most of them are fairly small and nondescript. But the, this esker is probably one of the best examples located midway between Ford Hill, which is a tiny community, and Dahlen, which is a community that no longer exists. It can be seen as a prominent ridge off State Highway 32. It's near the edge of uh, Grand Forks and Walsh County lines. And it was deposited by a meltwater stream that um, that is about four miles long, it's about 400 feet wide, and it gets as high as up to 50 to 80 feet. And in some places, native prairie covers the surface and it's completely surrounded by farmland. And are there, now we have still photos? No, this is another, the last, last video. Okay, we'll just quickly watch this last video. It's beautiful land and I can tell you, it doesn't look like this right now. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely covered in snow. Okay, here we have some photos. This is from on top of the Dalinesker that we are, we've chosen. Next. Another view. Tobias, I'm gonna to answer your question in a quick second. This is part of the stakeholder group who ventured out there and looked at about seven sites in the in the region four area. Next. This is a map of um, showing two counties and the circle at the bottom is the location. It borders then on uh, Grand Forks County and to the west is Nelson County, the fourth county. Next. These are some of the prairie flowers that are up on the Dalinesker. Next. There we have it. Okay. There's these are drone, then we have drone photos as well. Okay, how many? We'll just look at them quickly. You see how it's snaking around, curving around? All right, let's come back and we'll look at everybody and we'll, uh, I'll say a few more things and then we'll answer questions. Um,
Tobias, your question is, there a parcel number or intersection which one can use for future research? And yes, we will send that to you. Um, and we can, you know, we can't put it into the RFP, but we can send it to you for sure. So Brenna, would you just make a note that we have to send that to everybody? So a couple of other things that the uh, stakeholders discuss, which I think are very important to cover are, Additional concepts, water, very important part of the region. This is the region that has the Red River, which is unique in that it flows north and other waterways running through all four counties. Resilience, referring to the people of the land adapting to the climate and geography. And in addition, all four counties have experienced repeated periods of recovery, mostly related to natural disasters that have been water related. Movement of native people and immigrant settlers, exploration, trade, transportation. This is an area that included ox cart trails and a lot of waterway travel. It's always been an important aspect of the region. There's additional um, indigenous cultures, Métis, Chippewa, Ojibwe, and Sioux. There were settler communities, French fur traders, Icelandic communities, Ukrainian communities, Polish, Finnish, and Norwegian. And in addition, transformation. The idea that the landscape really impacted the lives of the residents. So then in the RFP, we gave you a lot of resources to the counties. And at this point, I am going to open it up for questions that we may not have covered. So uh, you can stick your Zoom hand up or you can unmute yourself and say, Hello, or uh, it would be wonderful if you want to show us your faces so that we're talking to you directly. Um, and if you have no questions, we can end the meeting. But I'd love to hear questions from you. Uh, me? Ah, uh, Paul, go ahead. We'll start with Paul and then go to Alan. Yeah, I just want to clarify uh, the the actual place itself is the top of the esker, or the, does it include the surrounding region as well? And is there a a walking path or a hiking path already on top of it? Is that it, do people walk it? Is it is that part of its attraction? All good questions. So here here is the answer to that question. The esker is on private property. So do people go up and look at it? I think they probably do. I think it helps if you know the landowner, which is how we got up there. Um, we're probably not going to be building on top of the Esker. We're going to be building at ground level off the state highway, across the road, looking at the Esker, looking at kind of the sides of the Esker. Um, I guess I would say it leaves room for something to go high. I think what we're gonna wanna capture is the feeling of the esker, but we won't be on the esker. We have about an acre of land. I wouldn't put that in your proposals, but clearly you can think wide. You could think tall, but what we're looking for is what captures those feelings that we expressed in the RFP. That's the most important thing. Looking at the history, looking at what it represents. Um, it's, it, it is a natural location, but no, we won't be on it. We'll just be near it. Okay, Alan, you had a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, you actually, I think you already answered, you just answered my question. I was going to ask about, uh, I, I got the impression that it was going to be on top of the esker, 
So it's not, so I don't, you know, I was just going to ask, ask about access to equipment and that sort of thing up there, but not an issue now. So, okay. Not, not an issue now. No. And in no, fact, uh, I would say, uh, and Zelda, maybe you can comment on this. You might know, but I would say there is no signage that tells you you're at the Dolinesker along that highway. Exactly. I drove it for 40 years and never knew what I was looking at, but always looked. <laughs> so we need we, to call attention. Yes, we're going to call attention to it. We also can count on Department of Transportation being involved in the process of helping us with byway signage. Um, we can also working with commerce and tourism on this. The nice thing is, is that um, by its very nature being one of eight installations and working with tourism, we will actually end up having a tour to all eight installations across the state that tourism will help us uh, market and we'll call attention again to all of the towns and cultural activity that are happening. Um, but this is, it's, it's an absolutely stunning, beautiful place. So it's entirely possible. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk out of the box here. I'm going to throw ideas out. Okay. And then I'll come back to you, Tobias, for your question. Um, could it be a mural? It, it, it could be a mural that would involve building something to put the mural on. Does it need to be in paint? No, it could be in mosaic. Could it be sculptural? Yes, absolutely it could. Could it go into the sky? Yes, absolutely it can. If you include in your ideas how it would be anchored and what you anticipate that it would do. Can it turn? It can turn and have movement. So long as you take into account the North Dakota wind and that we will have to, if we go up, we will have to go down to make sure that everything is really secure because we've got wind out the wazoo here. Um, it can be made of steel. It can be made of wood. It can be made of any combination of materials. Uh, it it um, will be on the side of of a highway in that sense, it will be what calls attention to this place because there is farmland all around it. So the, the approach is flat. Um, there you go. Tobias, I will answer your question. Um, I spent a lot of time on flat maps. So I thought that that was interesting that that came up, um, but you guys have such good um, video and photography that is otherwise not available through Google Maps or Platts or other means. Um, is there a plan to have this be accessible to applicants? It would be, I think it, we would make it accessible to the three finalists. Mm -hmm. And I guess I would say probably not before then because that would be an unfair advantage. I, 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 maybe we can, Rhea, can we post this on our website? Yeah, so yes, we can make it available. So Perfect. I will say, though, that that won't happen until, when do you get back? May, March when? Uh, March 22nd. But... Okay, so probably by March 24th, we'll yeah. have it available. We'll, uh -huh. we'll make sure that it gets up on the website. We'll make sure that there are images and the videos are available because they are, they are stunning. And it really gives you a sense I think of what the stakeholders discussed. Good question. Certainly. Sure. Who else has questions? I have a question. Yes, Greg. Uh, actually, I have three questions, if that's okay. That's uh, fine. Uh, just to put out there that actually I live in Western North Dakota, and I'm joining this meeting in hopes of getting some information when you get closer to our regions. Do you have a schedule of when the other regions in the state are going to be having their RFPs come out? No. Okay. <laughs> so re region eight, where you are, has a stakeholder group and they are, haven't yet started looking at sites. Okay. 
So okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, underway are uh, one, four, and two. In okay. process with stakeholders are three, six, and eight. Okay. I'm avoiding five and seven because they're the largest communities around Fargo and Bismarck. That's going to happen later. So just keep an eye on the email. Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, sort of a general question on what do you guys have in mind for the teaching and training? What 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 do you envision that to look like? Good question. So, uh, for example, Thane Lund, who is the artist who was selected in Region 1, he does land work. So his piece, he does a lot of other things, but because his piece is land work close to the ground, moving earth, building things up, we will, oh, next summer, when we break, once we break ground, we will select 10 to 12 North Dakota artists to go to the site and work with Thane for three or four days, not only on the site, but in training and understanding the concepts of what is land work? How do you work with contractors? How do you work with site people? What does it do to represent the community, et cetera? So we have funding for that in each of the regions. Our goal is to train future North Dakota artists in large scale arts installations. We have a lot of people who make big things, but we don't have a lot of people who do massive outdoor installations. Okay, very good. And finally, you may have answered part of this. Uh, can the artists and the builders rely on you to put us in touch with those who can tell us about local codes, um, safety issues, that kind of thing for the site that we're working on? Yes, and that will happen with the finalists. Once the once the artist is selected, before then you would have no need of it. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Good questions. More questions. Trudy, Dennis, Anastasia, Anastasia, however, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm good. I'm I'm listening to everyone else's questions and taking notes. <laughs> A great question. Can I email you the RFP? No, I will not email you the RFP. It is on our site. Oh, I apologize. I didn't see it there last time I looked. Was it's it just, okay. Was it's it just okay. You put up. It's been up. That that's it lives on the site. Um, Rhea, maybe you could put the link and enter it in the chat. Yep, I'll copy it right now. There you go. Okay, what other questions? Oh, Tobias, I'm sorry. You have to make your eyes move very quickly when you're on <laughs> No, I understand. Um, I'm curious about outreach. Um, I'm curious maybe what channels or strategies are being used for um, artist recruitment or um, to make this opportunity known to them and if there is um, a geographic component to that as well. Um, another good question. There is, uh, we sent this to all state arts agencies across the state uh, to as many public artists as I had connection with. We sent it to artist networks. We sent it to the PAN and PAX lists. We sent it to all of our stakeholders and asked them to get the word out. We sent it to other um, public arts agencies. I would say when Rhea posted this, we had more hits and looks than we've had for a lot of things. So the question though is when artists look at it, do they get discouraged either by the fee or by the fact that it's in North Dakota? We don't know the answer to that, but we have certainly have more people on this call than we had on the first call when we did region one. So word is spreading. So Paul Rhea posted the link right in there. Any of you, anybody else need it? Um, does the does the Council on the Arts um, share any statistics regarding applic applications received or um, artists interested, like 
for example, how many artists um, expressed interest in the last opportunity, if that's something you can share? I have no, I have no idea. I mean, I can tell you that we had um, nine applications of which three were selected. And then one was selected as the artist. And if you want to follow the press releases from those uh, that region, it's on the news page of that same website under press releases. So my hope is, Tobias, that there we will see more applications for this particular process. I would say we've responded to maybe 25, 30 emails thus far, just for people interested. We've also had a lot of people submit things and they're getting kicked out because they didn't follow the directions for submission. And unfortunately we need to stick, as a state agency, we have a specific route that we have to take to make it work, be fair. Any other questions? Zelda or Emma, do you want to say anything? But you have to show us your face if you do. Oh, hi, Emma. Do you, Emma and Zelda, do you want to share anything? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm just really excited to see this process take place. And it's the process as well as the end result that has been um, so, such a good thing. And it's I'm just waiting for the rest of it. But it was great to get together and decide these themes of our communities. Having lived here all my life and living close to the Eskers, I'm truly excited to see an art installation there to draw attention to them and to art. OK. And Emma is in high school, and we're thrilled that she's on the stakeholder group because she's offered us a very different perspective. Thank you. Okay. I do have one more question I just thought of. Sure. Um, will, who, how I want to phrase this. Uh, when it comes to the construction phase, will that be open for bids? Or if the artist knows of construction companies or people they've worked with in the past that they trust, may they choose those people? Or how is that going to be handled? That's a fair question. Um, a lot of this will uh, depend on how the money flows. So, for example, in Region 1, the grant funds for the project went through the county. So because it went through the county, there will not be a procurement process. If the funds go through us, there will be a procurement process. Um, so we will juggle that, but anyone who the final artist selected has worked with, we'll definitely want to talk to. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think relationships top everything. Um, we'll just have to see the location also of where it ends up. Given that we know where this ends up, we would like very much in region four to involve region four contractors and engineers, et cetera. Very good, thank you. Any other questions? Have we covered anything? Is there anything else you think you wanna know? People, places, money, ideas, thoughts you're having? It had been mentioned earlier, but um, regarding the specific address, um, did you say when and where? Um, I didn't write that down. When and where will get you the specific address? Yes, I would be curious to know um, the site. We would too. We're finalizing with the property <laughs> owner right now. Okay. Oh, certainly. Right. So we have a sense of the property, but we don't quite know the exact spot. So I would urge, go ahead. 
Hi, Kim. Um, so based on what I understood um, about the artwork itself is that it needs to be uh, fairly conservative and evoke positive feelings relevant to the region. However, I guess my question is, how conservative um, is your group about innovating the idea of public art? Um, are you wanting something that's uh, fairly like what's been done before in regards to public art or are you, are you open to innovating that? Right. Okay, so you didn't hear the word conservative come out of my mouth. I will just say that up front. This is about art and what we really want to see is how artists interpret the information in the request for the proposal. So really looking at, um, really looking, thinking about the eskers, thinking about water, resilience, movement, transformation, thinking about the materials that you would use. Um, and I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that we're not looking in phase one at a design concept from you. We're looking at you as an artist and how you respond to the questions and prior work samples, right? So, I'd say show us the range of your work. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Show us the range of your work, um, whether it's in one uh, design, uh, whether it's in one discipline or mixed disciplines, uh, colors, sizes, shapes. I'd say go for it because I think what the stakeholders and community members are going to look at is what captures the concepts that they put in the RFP. Does that make sense? Uh, sort of, yeah. Um, conservative isn't a bad word. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And, and again, you know, at that, at, at that point, when we have the three finalists, we'll know the exact spot. And we'll also have a little bit more information about uh, the land. Is it completely flat or is it backed up against a small hill? We know it's in a farm area. Um, so uh, right now I would just say, show us who you are and show us who you respond, how you respond to these concepts. And then the stakeholders will go from there in terms of their three finalists. So I'm not avoiding your question. I just think to start with, best thing to do is respond to the RFP. But we're, I think this is a pretty open group. I think they're very excited to see what artists can, in, can how they interpret these thoughts and turn them into something creative. Um, so if we wanted to do a mural, we would be responsible for constructing the, the face that it would be on? Yes, ma'am. There ain't no wall in that field. I just, I just wanted to make sure. So that would, again, you know, again, if, if all you do is mural work, then make sure you talk about in your letter how you anticipate that this could be created. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, there's no wall in that field right now. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so the first process of just submitting kind of uh, our bio, resume, background, uh, previous work. I wanted to know, along with that, the description, should we provide a description or is it just getting to know our work and the work we have done? Or do I need to say, I create this type of work and um, or allow my images to kind of speak for themselves? I think that, you know, you've got a uh, one page that where you can describe your interest in the project and how you approach art making. Um, it would be great to address the criteria just in terms of how you're going to research this, how you're going to look at region four, um, how you might, how you might uh, work with community members. Your images and what you put in there will if you have an idea, you can share it with us, but I guess I would just say, make sure it's really based in 
that region and what we're giving you for history and 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 uh, elements to follow. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Y'all good? Thumbs up around? Yeah? Okay. Please do, please contact us if you have any questions. We will respond. Uh, as, uh, we will, as soon as Rhea gets back from her overseas vacation, we will get the videos and the photos posted on the website so you can look at those. Uh, use the RFP. There's lots of links in there that you can look up the history and et cetera. Um, I urge you to be creative and thoughtful. And I mean, I think, as I said, I think this is a very wonderful group of stakeholders. They've worked hard on this. They're excited for it. And we are too. So it'll be interesting to see what y'all come up with and just send us some initial information so they can, they can noodle around and come up with some finalists to ask for full proposals. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. If we didn't answer anything, let us know. We're happy to help. Okay. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. your time.